Lesson on work and power. Work. What does work do? In the past few weeks, we've talked about objects having energy, but how do those objects acquire energy? Well, it's work that changes the energy of an object. Hence, work equals the change in energy. This change in energy could be a change in potential energy, or this work could go into changing the object's kinetic energy. How is work done? Work is done by applying a force for a distance. Thus, forces do work. It could be the force of gravity, the force of friction, or any applied force that can do work. Work equals force times distance. Since work equals a change in energy, the units of work are joules. But they're also equal to a newton meter as well, since we take force times a distance. That is, one joule is the same as one newton meter. Also note that the force and distance must be in the same direction, since they are vectors. Although when I multiply them together, I actually get work as a scalar quantity, just as energy is a scalar and has no direction. Yes, here I just lifted a thousand pound barbell over my head. Well, it's not really a thousand pounds. Let's call it 50 kilograms. How much work did I do to lift it over my head from the floor a distance of two meters? Well, recall that work equals force times distance. How much force did I have to apply to the barbell to get it lifted off the ground? Well, the minimum force I'd have to apply would be the force of gravity of the barbell. So let's figure that out right now. Recall that force of gravity equals mass times acceleration due to gravity. So that's going to be 50 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. So that's going to be a force of 490 newtons. Let's put that in our work equation for 490 newtons times a distance of 2 meters, and let's see how much work I did. So solving for work, 490 newtons times 2 meters is 980 joules or you could call it 980 newton meters. Also notice that I did work in this direction, which was against the force of gravity in this direction. That is, my force was also in the direction of motion. That my force was upwards, and the distance was upwards as well. The force and distance must be in the same direction for work to be done, since they are both vectors. How much work is done when I push the box across the floor a distance of 2 meters. And also, what's the velocity of the box here after 2 meters? Well, let's look at the beginning right here. That is, the initial kinetic energy of the box is 0 because it's not moving. But now once I push it across the floor, it now acquires some kinetic energy and has a velocity sometime later. So it does have a final kinetic energy based on its mass and whatever its final velocity is. Let's determine what that final velocity is of the box. In this case, the work done is going to change the box's kinetic energy. It's going to give it velocity. That work I do is a product of my applied force, how hard I push on the box, times the distance the box travels. That will equal its change in kinetic energy. So let's see how much work I did by applying a force of 40 newtons for 2 meters. Here you can see, I did, by 40 newtons times 2 meters, I did 80 joules of work, and thus the kinetic energy of the box is now 80 joules. Let's find the final velocity of the box. Recall that the change in something is its final minus its initial. So in this case, the change in kinetic energy is the final Ke minus the initial Ke. The initial Ke is just 0, so the final kinetic energy would just be expressed as 1 half m v final squared. So 80 joules equals 1 half the mass of the box times the final velocity squared. Let's put in the mass of the box as 10 kilograms and solve for v. If you do this out, 1 half of 10 is 5, divided into 80 is 16, and the square root of 16 gives you a velocity of 4 meters per second. Power. Power is the rate at which work is done. 
is how quickly you can do work. So here power equals work divided by time. Two people can do the same amount of work, but if someone does it faster in a shorter amount of time, that person will be more powerful. We measure the amount of power in the units of watts. Where work is measured in joules, time is in seconds, and a watt would be a joule per second. This could also be the rate at which energy is dissipated if friction is doing work on something and causing that object to come to a stop. You've also probably heard of horsepower. One horsepower, or one HP, is equal to 746 watts. If this person pushes the box and does this much work in moving it from there to there, but then they push it again and they do this that same amount of work in a shorter time, we would say they would be more powerful the second time. Well, if you recall my lifting the barbell, and I did 980 joules of work. Well, what if it took me three seconds to lift the barbell over my head? How powerful would I have been? Well, I could take power equals work over time and get 980 joules divided by three seconds. And that would mean I would have done about 327 watts of power. We will see more how these concepts are used in activities in class. Work with force vectors. This part is for honors physics. If you recall from earlier in the video that work is done by a force and distance, and the force and distance must be in the same direction. Well, what if I apply a force of 75 newtons downward at an angle of 30 degrees and hence move this box a distance of, say, 2 meters? How much work did I do? Well, it wouldn't be as easy as taking 75 newtons times 2 because 2 meters is in this direction and 75 newtons is in this direction. So we'd have to resolve our forces into the components. Thus, 75 newtons would have a, a horizontal component and a vertical component. Here we would need to take that horizontal component. So let's resolve that 75 newtons into its force components. So if I look at my force vector diagram here, 75 newtons at 30 degrees, if I do cosine of 30, that would be this adjacent side or the x component of force over 75 newtons. This would give me an x component of force of about 65 newtons. To find the work done, this would be the force and distance in the same direction. So this would be about 65 newtons times 2 meters or 130 joules of work. Note we're assuming that there is no friction between the box and the ground. If there were friction, we could look at the work done by the applied force and work done by the force of friction as well. Thank you for watching and see you in class.